Hello, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Emilio Sepulveda. I'm co-founder and CEO of Natural Machines. Natural Machines is a company that, that does that. This is uh, Fudini. It's a kitchen appliance that is based on 3D printing technology. What we do print is food. And uh, why we do that? So as um, a company, um, we wanted to help people to get uh, healthier eating. That means getting back to cook at home normally with fresh ingredients. So we created a kitchen appliance that allows you to personalize food. And what does it mean? Of course, it's making nice shapes, but it's also about controlling the nutrients you are getting, so uh, nutritional control. It's also about textures. We are working with hospitals to create textures that are good for people with dysphagia. Uh, people that may be elderly people or have a cancer. Um, you can also adapt tastes or also create uh, food that is exactly the portion you are going to eat, so you avoid wasting food. So at the end of the day, this is a tool that allows you to create your own food. And uh, those are examples of things we can do. This is uh, used by chefs in restaurants. Of course, the impact is uh, uh, making something nice looking. But in other cases, we are working with hospitals, as I mentioned. We are working with cutters, with schools, and with food brands. And I will get back to food brands and explain why they would use that. So again, this is a tool for you to create your food adapted to your needs. Um, as I mentioned, we want to help people to uh, get to healthier eating. So we are not forcing people to buy pre-filled capsules. This is not an espresso. Uh, we use uh, Fudini with uh, stainless steel capsules. So you can put inside whatever you want. It doesn't have to be pure texture. It can be a range of textures ranging from something that is almost liquid to something that may have solid chunks in it, like minced meat or a whole grain rice whatever you want to put in them. So depending, of course, on, on the nozzle size, you would get uh, something that is more detailed and it's going to take longer, or something that takes uh, a couple of minutes to print. So it's, of course, people is not going to wait hours to have dinner. There is also, of course, a pre filled model. We are not uh, food producers. We are not putting food inside the capsules, but we are working with food brands. And the reason why food brands would uh, like to work with this kind of uh, tool is because it allows them to provide a wider range of choice to the customers. So instead of shipping the final product, they can ship uh, the ingredients. And uh, for people that is looking uh, for convenience, they also give uh, them a broader choice of the final result. So imagine uh, you want to eat pizza, but you are allergic to gluten. So you could have or you can create your own pizza adapted to your needs. Um, These this, uh, pre-filled capsules all come with an ID. And this ID allows us to fit uh, the brands back with it about what the uh, consumers are using. Oh, Sorry, no consumers anymore. So the users are doing with, uh, with the food, which combinations, and uh, what portion size. So it's uh, a direct channel for them to communicate with the, uh, with the consumers. The consumers also can know what is the nutritional value, what they are doing, and adapt the, uh, the sizes to, for example, only 100 calories. So I'm going to show you a video about how people react when introduced to printed foods. Anyone, 3D printed cookies, get them right here. This has come out of a printer and it's edible? It's been printed out? But how is it done? It's good. It tastes like a normal cookie. It's good. It can't be from a printer. It's really good. Some, the idea is perhaps a little too radical. No? No? No, no. no. no thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. It's from a printer? 
No, I don't trust it. So it's super rica. It tastes super delicious. It's really good. It's muy buena. It's great. The shapes are imaginative. Mm, tasty. Really tasty. What? That's cool. That's awesome. So the, the outcome or what we get uh, out of this is that when you uh, let people try food and you don't uh, let them know that it has been printed, they think that it's, it's good, it's, it's, the taste is good, the, uh, uh, the texture is good. But if you let them know in advance that it has been printed, then there is a barrier in there. So people is like a bit reluctant to try it. They may think this is cardboard, this is, the taste is not going to be good and it's going to be artificial. So mixing, uh, printing with foods normally creates this kind of barrier. So I, I know that has been a survey uh, before the, uh, the, uh, the show today, and uh, some of you have answered about how eager would you be to, to try printed food, but I want to, uh, to know from you if there is anyone that would be reluctant to, to try it. Any, any hands up? Okay, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> So you, I must say that you are brave because normally people is very reluctant to, to try. So um, the thing is that if you are buying anything from a supermarket, like a pizza, cookies, whatever you want, you are already eating uh, printed food. And uh, you don't know it because in, in the industry, they don't use uh, printing as a way of describing what they are doing. But at the end of the day, what we have done is taking these technologies that exist in the, in the food factories and shrunk them into a kitchen factor. So even though we are using printing as a verb, what we are doing is no different from what is happening in a factory. So it's exactly the same process. The difference is that it's happening in, in your kitchen and you control what the ingredients are. So instead of uh, using uh, or buying uh, something that is pre-made, you can uh, make it at home. And, and you may say, why would I do that? So what's, what's the advantage for me? Basically is that you can avoid uh, what is in, in the pre-processed food. So a lot of salt, sugar, oil, and, and preservatives. And instead uh, making it uh, adapted to your taste and your needs. We are currently uh, working with uh, uh, professionals. Professionals means chefs, and they are looking for consistency in what they design. They are looking for uh, uh, something they cannot do by hand. But we are working also, as I mentioned, with hospitals, for example, for patients uh, with uh, nursing home, for elderly people, with schools, and uh, with, with food brands as well. Uh, but our final goal is to go to the home kitchen. So there is something that is missing in our device in order to get into in the home kitchen, and is the uh, capability to cook. So we already develop our own technology, and uh, we have a prototype working in, in our premises, and we expect to launch it in like one and a half years or so. And uh, it's a technology that is only using 10% of the energy uh, used by a, a regular oven. So we expect that in 10 years, uh, Fodini will become a common kitchen appliance in the, in the kitchens in, in the homes worldwide. But there is another aspect other than uh, personalizing food in all the aspects I mentioned, and it has to do with food waste. Um, Fodini is a tool that is not only uh, helping people to get what they, eat, what they want, but also is helping to reduce food waste. And I will show you some examples. And uh, this has an impact uh, both in the ecosystem, of course, but also is an economical impact for the people that uh, is starting to use the, the device. So it's uh, allowing them to get better margins. And this is always when you start using something must be an economical reason for it. Um, this may be a bit shocking, but uh, proof of that is that like three weeks ago, we got investment from Close Loop Ventures, which is a venture capital that is only investing in circular economy projects. So um, it's not the angle probably that we envision when we started the company, but it's getting more and more important for us. So examples, so we are working with Matis in Iceland. It's a fish company, and uh, what they are telling us is that 
30% more or less of the product they, they, uh, they take as, as raw materials must go to garbage because uh, when you get too close to the bone, then the cuts are not nice looking or are too small to be offered to, to the customers. So we are working with them to create uh, new products with this uh, part of the fish. They uh, spent last week in, in our office uh, making things. They were making pizza with fish, uh, pasta with fish. Of course, we are tricking the consumer. They may think that they are eating like uh, something else, but it's looking familiar to them. Same happens with the meat industry, exactly the same problem. That the cats that are too close to the bone, the cats that are not nice looking, but still have the uh, same nutritional values, uh, normally are not used or are used in, in ways that they lose a lot of value. So this is a way for them to uh, create value for the customers, reduce the, uh, the waste in the, in the materials. And uh, this is already happening. We are in a project with a couple of companies and, and they are looking forward to see what they can, uh, they can do with, uh, with this kind of product. Vegetables and fruits, I think has been mentioned today. It's like those pieces that are too small or they don't look nice, they cannot go to the store because customers are already used to buy something that is very nice looking. So for those fruits, for those vegetables, we are working with companies and they, what they are doing is uh, uh, dehydrating or lethalizing the, uh, the food so we can use it in the device, but we don't need to add any, any preservatives and, and we don't add, need to add anything. And we are having an extended shelf life. So for all these companies, is uh, basically the start of the, of the chain is uh, food producers. They are selling the value. They are seeing also that they, uh, they can go straight to the customer. But we find also uh, savings in food waste at the other end of the chain. So you have the restaurants, they have a lot of food waste, maybe because they are also having smaller pieces that can, cannot be offered to the customers. Or in high-end restaurants, if the uh, dish has, has something that has failed, maybe they have to start from scratch and they waste the ingredients that we're using this specific plate. So this is, uh, this is a real case and this is an economic incentive for restaurants to use uh, our device. The home kitchen is similar, so maybe you are getting uh, uh, something from the supermarket, the portions are too big. Either you repeat the same thing or you throw away part of it. So there is also the possibility to, to have Houdini talk to the fridge and say, hey, this is about to expire. This is the recipes you could be doing with these uh, ingredients instead of throwing them away. Those are examples of things we have uh, created. So this is just pumpkin. It takes like two minutes to create and uh, it changes a lot seeing things like that instead of uh, just having something that is not nice looking. Also for, for kids there is an incentive to use the device. So uh, you know that kids, uh, if something is green, is suspicious. In this case, uh, you can like hide this. This is a spinach quiche made in the shape of dinosaurs and it makes it very appealing. But again, you can print only the ones that the kid is going to eat, no more food waste. So, so to summarize, it's like we are working on personalized food. We want to bring the people opportunity to have healthier eating, but also there is a strong incentive, economical incentive for professionals and food brands to use it as it allows them to get engaged to the customers and, and increase their margins. So I hope I uh, like gave you a bit of insight of why 3D footprinting may make sense. And uh, well, thank you for, for your attention.